So this is going to be about making the base. So a few tools you're going to need. I'll, you know, one of them you'll need is your uh, tri-square here. And if, depending on what size pocket bearings you use, these particular bearings, 5 eighths inside, is an inch and 3 eighths on the outside. So I use an inch and 3 eighths portion of bit to recess these with. We'll see that. And I had a uh, 11 sixteenths portion of bit, bit to allow the shaft to clear. And also this pocket bit, or a Craig jig drill bit right here. If you can see that, even if you don't have the jig, this is good. You got a stop on there, a stop collar. You tighten with an Allen wrench to set your depth. And then I have an assortment of these. Uh, you can get pan head screws. You can get screws for putting like uh, windows and stuff in. Uh, lath screws, I think is what they call them at the store. Craig also sells these. You got a little shoulder. And the neat thing about the ones Craig sells is there no, there's no uh, thread right here. So you'll have this part with no thread in your block, and then you'll have your threaded portion pull it down. So you can see I just made a temporary treadle by half of a dowel rod and just put some pieces on it here. So this is all temporary. So looking at the base, I used my Forstner bit over here. Uh, inch and an eighth force from bit for the inch and an eighth dowel rod. It seemed to be more cost efficient once you jumped up another size, the, the dollar value shot up a lot. And when I was marking these out, I put blocks under here, set that up, and I just held these boards past the edge of it and laid a pencil flat on this and just marked those just with a board out to the end, just roll the pencil around and I mark my profile on these and cut them out on a bandsaw. You can use a jigsaw or whatever. So first I made it and found out it was too low. So then I had to make it higher and put these extensions. My suggestion is make your base, make your three legs, make your treadle before you do anything else to get this thing at a comfortable height and then go from there. So I'll give you some dimensions now. So my base piece, the main piece, you know, this is all made out of firewood that I let set for about three years. So 25 inches long by seven inches wide, two and three quarter inches thick is this piece. You can see my spacer block here. For mine, it was like two and three quarters, but yours will depend on the width of your wheel. So set that aside. Next we have our leg pieces and this uh, to make these you would need a piece of wood uh, at least uh, ten and a half inches long and another three inch tall blocks so this wood is two and five eighths by two inches and I use that on the front legs and you can see uh, from the bottom side I'll have my pocket holes in there and also the bottom of the legs so from the top you don't see any of the fasteners for the back leg you can see some of these from the top especially that one but you know I wanted to make it pretty sturdy so to make this piece of wood you'll need a nine and a half inch by three and a half by somewhere around two and then there again a block three inches tall and of course if you cut this on the 45 or this 22 or whatever it was uh, it's going to depend on where it comes out but if that's three and a half your block ended up being three and seven eighths with whatever angle I use there I just freehanded that these two parts here are the vertical pieces for the wheel to set on remember we had a spacer on the base So these will set like so. Just like that. And then there's a spacer block. 
that goes across the top. I used a quarter round router bit with a bearing on the top, routed off all the sides, and then I sanded all this with 220 grit on a uh, palm sander. And what I'm going to use to finish this with, especially this piece first, I'm going to use sanding sealer for hardwood floors. It's kind of like a wood hardener. It, it really toughens this up. Just put the sanding sealer on, let it dry, sand it off good. And then I'm going to use uh, polyurethane for hardwood floors. You can use water base if you don't like the sm smell. But I found that the polyurethane, no matter which kind you use, which water cleanup's a lot easier, um, if it's good enough for floors, it's good enough for my woodworking. Um, you've already got the UV blockers in it, and it's super tough stuff. It's thin.